If you're into landscape architecture and design, you definitely don't want to miss Lens Design. This is a plugin for Rhino that allows you to play with landscape design projects of different scales, including thousands of different plant species. At the same time, you can create huge forests, urban furniture, and all of the assets can seamlessly be used with a rendering engine such as V-Ray. Some of the features of Lens Design include very powerful terrain modeling tools, where you can create the terrain from point clouds, elevation curves, and contours. I'll show you in a little bit how to create a lens design terrain with SubD tools, and I think this workflow really allows you to be super creative when it comes to landscape architecture. Additionally, lens design has smart objects which can be used for documentation, quantity takeoffs, etc., plus the extensive plant database that I already mentioned, which contains both 3D and 2D characteristics. Great for conceptual diagrams as well. There are tools for dynamic 2D documentation as well as integration with Grasshopper that allows us to create our own parametric design iterations. So think about this possibility for a second. Connecting urban and landscape design with parametric modeling in Grasshopper. Lens design is compatible with rendering engines like Enscape, Lumion, V-Ray, so you have the ability to bring all of these designs to life in your static visualizations and animations as well. Now let's take a look at some of my favorite features in Lens Design. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, the sub D plane. I'm going to create here one uh, sub D square and also I'm going to uh, extrude these edges on this side and maybe these three as well uh, on the opposite side. And our goal here would be to just create some kind of uh, hill, something that would represent our ground. So I will extrude this uh, part here. And also I'm going to try to scale it down a little bit and maybe adjust this um, edge here. So I'll scale it out a little bit. And then once we're ready, then now we will do uh, contour and we want to uh, actually create the contours for this hill like this. And now you will see that we have all of these contours that we need. With these contours, we're going to uh, hide this sub D and now we're gonna use those contours to create the terrain. I'm gonna click here, terrain, and here I will choose the X and Y cell size. I'm gonna keep the default and now I need to select the curves. I click enter and I'm gonna get the ground. You can see here that it's not 100% precise. So what we can do, we can actually change the cell size, we can uh, put something smaller, like two, for example, and this will make it more dense. So I'm gonna select the curves again, and I will execute a command, and I will see that it's much closer to, to my contours. So this is the way that you can create uh, this kind of terrain with lens design. And now let's create another sub D. I will create seven by seven uh, plane here, and I want to create something a little bit more complex uh, for our next example. So just take a couple of these uh, faces. I will try to uh, create some sort of hills here. Um, our, our goal here would be to create a couple of them uh, because we want to have something a little bit bigger so that I can show you all of the features later on. So we're going to put some of these uh, a little bit on the bottom and uh, we want to create both hills and valleys so we have different types of um, inclination on our terrain. So let's uh, just adjust these last ones. And then, uh, you know, we can do final touches and adjust this further, but I think for now we're good. And our next step here would be to maybe uh, now create the contours again. So I'm gonna lift this up a little bit and I'll uh, activate the contour command again. And now we're gonna uh, execute the same, uh, same action again. I'm gonna create the contours. And now watch what happens when I click on the contour, I click enter and you will see all of those curves populating on our terrain. Uh, the same thing, I would hide the sub D and I would use these curves to create a terrain from sub D. We'll use terrain component. Uh, and this, uh, this time we'll choose even uh, denser. Uh, so I'm gonna pick one by one uh, for the cell size. And once we execute this, you will see that we're gonna have a very good uh, precise terrain, which is based on our sub D that we created. Now let's take a look at the second option I want to show you here, which is called uh, Add Path. So I'm gonna go to the top view here. I'm going to lock 
uh, my terrain here and I will create a couple of curves. I will create two curves. One is going to go from a top left corner and then it's going to span all around to the bottom here. And then the second one will go from the opposite direction on the bottom left and it's going to grow all the way until the top right. So these will be like our paths and we wanted to create those curves. And now let's bring those curves in the same level. So I'll just select them. I'll use set point and bring them to the same Z value. And now I'm going to unlock uh, this terrain and it's time to actually activate add path here. I'm going to click there. It's going to ask us to pick the terrain and then it's going to ask us what is the width of our path. In this case, it's going to be five. And then it's going to ask us what is the angle. We're going to keep the default as 45 degrees and pick a curve. So we just need to pick the curve and magically we'll have the path created for us automatically, right? You see what, what we did here. And the same thing we would do for a um, second curve, of course, but this time we're going to slightly modify it. So I'm going to pick add path. I will pick the terrain and I will uh, change the width to, let's say 10 uh, this time. And uh, angle will be the same. We're going to pick the curve, the one on the left. And once we click enter, we're going to get something like this. So you'll see here that our path is uh, bigger. So this one is 10. The first one was five. And on top of this, you can see how they're meeting together at this point and everything is created automatically. Uh, very handy. And now, if, what if we want to put some tiling on top of this? We can use this uh, option here, that's called path. And you can actually choose uh, the profile. You can create a profile. You can also choose the material of how this path would look like. Here you can choose different types of materials. And um, after you choose whatever you like, you can select it from here. And then you would go to the path, you would choose the custom option or the rectangular here. You just put the, uh, the you can see the section profile there on the top. Here we put nine by 0 0.3. And this will be uh, also, we can adjust the smoothness. And once we have all of this uh, ready, we can simply click okay. And then just pick the curve. It's gonna ask us to pick the curve. Once we click on the curve, the path is going to be automatically created for us. Same thing we would do for uh, the second uh, path. We would just change the uh, distance here now from uh, 9 to 4.5. Here we can maybe put 0 0.20 or something like this. And I'm going to pick uh, the second curve. And just like that, we created both paths uh, that uh, automatically with Lens Design. Okay, so first let's change this layer uh, to some different color like this so we can see this better. And let's start with uh, plants paint. This is the option that I want to show you. If you click on the browse, you will see uh, the collection, a huge library of, um, of species that you can find based on um, many different parameters like uh, location, temperature and so on. So we're going to just select, uh, for example, this, uh, this type and we're going to use the default uh, for now. We're going to click OK. And the way that this works, you just need to click and then you need to drag your mouse and it will continuously uh, position trees as long as you don't click again. So right now here I'm moving my mouse and when I click again, it will stop creating the trees. And this is the, the process that you can take and you can create them in many different places. For example, if I click here and if I start dragging my mouse, it will be creating those trees randomly wherever I move my mouse. And then, then when I'm ready, when I don't like, uh, when I don't want to move anymore, I will just click again and I finish the command. Keep in mind that you can also, you know, modify this. You can change, you can put some other trees. We can choose some other uh, species here. So maybe let's try some other type, maybe this one. Yeah, this is like a yellowish one. So we click on select and click OK. And then we can now paint uh, this other uh, type of the tree. So I'm going to just click here. I'm going to drag it uh, on this side and you can see how easy it is to just, uh, you know, populate your scene with uh, with these uh, elements. When I'm ready, I, I now want to, do, to move to the other side and I'm going to create the same type of pattern uh, here. And once I'm ready, once I'm done, I'm going to click again and that will finish uh, the command. Now, if you zoom in, you will see that we have all of these trees populated uh, in these areas. Uh, but you will notice that some of them are not exactly standing right. You can see that some of them are actually um, not in their correct position. But you see here, if I move them, they actually stick to the ground, right? So if I move them in any position, 
they will go on top of the terrain. And this is the feature of lens design. So if I move this guy, you can see how it uh, comes back uh, on, on its feet. And the way that we want to, sometimes you want to select all of them and you, maybe you want to just reposition them on top again. So now I will select all of them and I just want to, you know, put them again uh, up and then release them down so that they are positioned correctly. Another great command is forest. You can create forests here. You simply click on the browse and you can pick and choose uh, the species that you want to uh, use uh, as an element for the forest. Uh, here in this section forest you can specify the amount of units and also the minimum distance between them. Uh, now I'm going to click OK and you will see that on the top I'm going to have select curves, hatches or regions. In this case I can also choose uh, like spline or polyline, so I'm going to choose spline and watch what I'm doing now. I'm going to click uh, and I'm going to create this spline. And the way that this works is while I'm creating this spline my forest is going to be uh, inside of this spline, right? So you can see how I'm creating this spline so that it catches the whole uh, the whole path there where we have our uh, trees as well. And when I'm fin once I'm finished with this, you can see that now when I click on this tree, I only have tr uh, three trees, but I want to open here lens design options in Rhino and here I can modify this further. So here I can change the minimum distance between the trees. So here, if I change the distance, you can see how now I have more of them. Also, I can change uh, the number of units. Right now, I'm just playing with the minimum distance, but uh, if you want to change the number of units, you can do so here. However, uh, you will notice that uh, now our trees are actually, you know, on the path, and this is not the case. So if you want to modify, you know, if you want to modify this, then we would need to change that initial spline. So the way that this works is we would have to go uh, to this section here that's called 2D. So uh, next to the 3D, we also have 2D. Now I'm actually just playing to see if this will solve it, but we need to go to the 2D section. And here I need to select that forest. And now you can see that I have this spline in the background that I can select. So now I'm selecting the points on that spline. And the way that this works, when I'm modifying the spline, you can see how the forest is modifying with it, right? So it's connected with the spline. And the area that I that I that I move is actually uh, the area where these trees are going to be populated. So I'm going to simply try to make that area as close as possible to that hill, that side hill that we want uh, to place our forest on. And also I'm going to modify this part here because we don't want this to cross on the other side. Um, sometimes it's a little bit tricky to select this, but you just need to select it properly. And then uh, right now we positioned it quite well, I think. So this is going to be the, the final touch and we're ready. And we have now positioned uh, the forest only on one side of the hill. And this is how you can do for any other forest as well. This last option that I want to show is import uh, import Earth uh, elevation data. And the way that this works, it uh, allows us to pretty much take any any uh, you know any city, any location on Earth, and we can simply create a rectangle where we want our uh, terrain. And the cool thing is that you can not only use the terrain, but you can also get the buildings with it. So here I'll just choose some terrain, and I'm gonna create a rectangle. So uh, you can create any size of rectangle and it's going to import it properly. So uh, here actually need to click on create lands terrain and create buildings. You also want to have that. Uh, then all you need to do, uh, actually, before I go on, you can uh, switch a couple of options here. You can change this either to streets, to outdoors, to satellite. And based on the maps, you can see the elevation as well. Once you know what you want, you simply click here uh, to adjust the accuracy. So you can adjust the accuracy if you go on the right. And the more you adjust this, the pre more precise it's going to be. And once you're ready, you can simply click on the import. Uh, it's going to ask you again to click on the import. And then uh, the next uh, thing would be to download. So it's not downloading and it should import the terrain directly in your Rhino model. Here it is. So now it's overlapping. So I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to move it a little bit on the side. 
as you can see here we have three uh, elements we have mesh we have terrain and we have the buildings so this way you can pretty much import any type of terrain and this is the terrain the native uh, the native lands design terrain which means that you can populate trees on top of it and do everything that we did, just did uh, in the previous example uh, and here again you have the buildings as well so you can you know change the layers you can modify this and you can use it as you like if you'd like to see more on lens design we've created another tutorial on it some time ago so you can check it out here and if you're interested in seeing more information about rhino grasshopper and other plugins i would encourage you to check out our free training on the website if you haven't already this will give you a better understanding of what this software is capable of and how to master it as soon as possible the link is in the description take care